What's up everybody? Welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, the last few bits and pieces for the new project just, just arrived. So by now we can finally start working on the hardscape. Super excited. Hope you guys are excited as well. Uh, let's see what's in these two boxes. All right, let's take a look what we got here. Okay, first thing we got is dark mountain substrate. I think this is just regular crushed lava rock, but then the, the black black variety. So you usually you have all these like brown, crushed brown lava rock. I think this is the black one. Never used it before. So let's see if this is any good. Yes. Ah, I see. So it's just regular crushed lava rock the black variety it's a bit smaller than I would like I would like a bit bigger chunks but it's still good this stuff is great to, to put underneath your uh, aqua soil for example it's fairly cheap and it um, it's, it's good to build up height in the substrate you know so if you want to have a uh, build up a lot of height in the in the back of the aquarium then this stuff this stuff is great it also it's very porous so it's very good for, for beneficial bacteria all right, we also have some clear hoses for the uh, Was Biomaster. These are from Chihiros, I think. Yeah. So this is three meters, should be enough. And then I got some Purigen from Seachem. I've actually never used this stuff before, but a lot of people yeah, recommend it. So I thought, let's, let's just give it a try. So I'm gonna add that to the to the filter later on. Uh, we got some CO2 drop checker liquid. This is a lot. 250 milliliters. This should last a lifetime. Very nice. And then we also have some ADA clear water. Also never used this stuff, but also heard a lot of good stories about it. Should be should make the water crystal crystal clear. So let's see if it works. And then over here in this box. We have two bags of aqua soil. One, two. Also a product that I've never used before. Oh, taking a lot of risk here. This is aqua soil from Acorio, the Neo Soil Compact for plants yeah again heard a lot of good stories about it so I'm very curious to test this one out as well so I have a few ideas of what I want to do with the hardscape with the layout but nothing really specific yet and that's because you know I've never worked with this size aquarium never had a shallow tank actually um, I've, it's been a long time since I've escaped a large aquarium as well. So I tried to work a little bit with the uh, cardboard box that I had from this aquarium. The, yeah, the, I tried to make sort of like a dojo, but it's just not the same without the substrate. You know, you can't really you know, play with the, with the height and you don't know. It's just hard. So once I have the substrate in, then I can like, get a proper vision, get a proper idea as well. So yeah, I'm just going to get started. I'll take you guys with me, show you guys as much as possible. Um, let's get started. So this is the hardscape I'll be using. These are some really, really beautiful rocks. I think they're um, called elderly stone, also known as, as Frodo, I think. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same as Frodo. But yeah, it's just beautiful, beautiful rocks. Look at the details on this one. I have a few more uh, in the back. But yeah, just to show you guys, these are the rocks. I think it will be a rock only layout, but I'm not sure on that just yet. Uh, I just want to get started on the hardscape and I'll just, yeah, just work on it. And I think I'll actually take a few days to work on it as well. It's not going to be done in, in just a couple of hours. I really, really want to take my time with this hardscape layout.
far that's the hardscape complete let's fill up with water nah i'm kidding of course but this rock guys this is the like the most beautiful rock i've ever seen i think how can you be so enthusiastic about a simple rock well it's not simple but what i really like to do is have this rock sort of break the water surface so it more standing upright so this front part this pointy side will be above water maybe we can have some nice moss on that i think that will look awesome so let's see if we can do that. All right, it's now actually eight or nine days since I first started working on the hardscape. Yeah, like I said, I was gonna take my time with it. So sorry guys if you had to wait a little bit longer for an update, but I think I can safely say that by now I'm 90, 95% happy with how it looks right now. Let's go take a look. So in the past week, I've just been working on the hardscape. Like every, every night I would like take an hour and just try to make a nice composition. And then I would like to take a step back, just look at the overall picture. And ask some feedback from other people as well as from other aquascapers. I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday that I finally found a nice composition that I was really happy with. I already have a bit of a plan in my head about what I want to do with the planting. And let me know guys, if you are interested in that kind of video where I would explain how I choose plants for, for a layout. Let me know if you would like that. But yeah, the plan right now is to actually add a bit more soil because the current layer is sort of mixed up with the crushed lava rock. So we're gonna add a fresh layer of soil and then I actually wanna fill it up with water as well and install the filter and sort of get the, get the whole thing going. Because right now it's Monday and this week I'll order the plants and then the plants should arrive hopefully somewhere next week. So, the aquarium has already sort of like a week or a week and a half to sort of establish, you know, we can get some beneficial bacteria going in the filter. We can get some of that ammonia from the substrate, get that out as well. Um, sort of like, like they would call it a dark start. So where you sort of yeah, cycle the aquarium before you actually plant it. Then we don't have to do as many water changes as well. So that's the plan right now. We're gonna add more soil, install the filter, fill it up with water and then wait for the plants. All right, so that was a little surprise. I just opened another bag of the Neo Soil from Acorio and there was actually two bags of root taps inside. And the previous, the, the two bags that I used earlier, they actually didn't have this. So this was kind of a surprise. So I guess we will use these in the substrate as well. All right, that looks different. So I just added one more bag of soil. So in total I've used uh, three bags of eight liters, so 24 liters of soil, and then 12 kilos of the crushed lava rock. So we have quite a lot of substrate going in here. Let's see from the side. So on the front we have barely two or three centimeters. And this is almost 15, almost halfway up. 
So the next step is to attach the filter. I've already installed the, uh, the pipes. These are the plastic pipes from Acorio. Really like them. I'm using them on a couple of aquariums now. Like that we can, uh, we can adjust where the flow goes, you know? So I think if it comes from here, then it'll go forward, 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 and then in a circle and come back to the inflow. By the way, I will not be using the tabs just yet. It says here on the packaging, if set to neo soil, use it after two months. So because of course the soil already has a lot of nutrients. And then after two months, we can add more nutrients from, from the taps. So we'll add these later. So let's continue with the filter. Yuanze Biomaster. Look at her. Isn't she a beauty? Uh, I want to make a few adjustments and add some media to it. So I'm going to take out some of the basket with sponges and add some nice media. So I've been watching some videos from this YouTuber called Pon Guru, and I'm gonna set up the Waza Biomaster basically the same way that he does it, because he seems like he knows what he's doing. So this is the bottom tray, and this is the media that's from Waza itself. I don't know if this stuff is any good. I just, I don't think it is really very good for beneficial bacteria. So I don't know, it might be fine, but I wanna try something else. So I'm gonna do it the way he does it. So this is actually the top compartment. And this has the finest uh, filter sponge. So I'm actually gonna take this one out and put it in the bottom tray. Because after the Pre-filter, this is like the first sponge that will uh, that the water will touch. So I have to find this filter sponge, and then I'm gonna top it up with um, what is this filter filter floss? The, the really fine stuff. So yeah, just like that. So this basket will actually go on the bottom. So the water will come in. We'll first hit the pre-filter, and then it will travel first through this basket. So then the pre-filter and this basket will basically catch all of the gunk, all of the waste organics, and then all the other baskets will just be um, for biological filtration. So I'm gonna put this one in on the bottom. I still have five baskets left with um, just sponges. Oh, here's another one of those. And then I have a few bags of this stuff. This is Neo Media Soft. This is also another product from Acurio. This was actually sponsored, so thank you Acurio. And this is biological filter media that also softens the water a little bit. So this is perfect for aquatic plants or if you're keeping shrimp or you have like a South American biotope. Um, yeah, it should soften the water, so I've never used it before. So let's test it out as well. So I'm gonna fill a few baskets with this Neo Media Soft. So every bag of the Acurio Neo Soft Media comes with these tiny pellets. And according to the packaging, this is supposed to encourage the nitrifying bacteria. So I thought that's interesting. So you just open this bag and then you pour it over the, the media. And then once it comes in contact with water, the, uh, this should be activated or something. It's interesting. All right, then we get to the last um, compartment. This is a really small one, so I'll add a little bit more of uh, the filter floss just to get rid of the last bits of waste. And I'll also add a bag of Seachem Purigen. I've never used this before, but it's supposed to help with um, you know, reducing ammonia, reducing nitrites, and just polishing the water. So that goes on top. A little bit more filter floss. And then we're all set. Alright, the filter is completely ready. I've uh, installed the hoses as well. 
I've left the hoses a bit longer than I should. I did that for a reason. There's still one piece of equipment missing. Um, I'll let you guys guess what that is. It will come, it will come soon, I hope. Um, yeah, now it's time to fill it up with water. All right, here we go. First water is in. All this extra protection to keep the water from flowing gently, but it went all the way straight. Here, I still messed up the perfect line that I made. That's okay. Now, the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is <laughs> this rock. I hope it doesn't collapse. There's a little bit of protection underneath there. I think it will be okay. I'll, uh, I'll stay close and not go anywhere and hopefully it will not collapse. Right, take two. I hope I fixed it. Yeah, just raised a lot of rocks in that crack there. Some black lava rocks where you don't really see them. So I hope I hope it stays now. Fingers crossed. Alright, we're almost full. The rock hasn't moved anymore. So let's hope it stays that way. I'm gonna prime the filter because that's gonna take another 10 liters of water easily. And then we'll fill it up all the way to the top. So now is the moment of truth. We're gonna fire up the Oasa Biomaster. I guess that's how it feels when you're building your own car and you're starting it for the first time or something. <laughs> Let's see how much flow this beast will produce. I'm curious about that. But that is definitely a strong flow. I will see if it's if it's too much I can always switch to a regular lily pipe. You know the the outflow here is it's very narrow, so of course it's producing a strong flow right now. We'll see. Thank you. 